हेलो एवरीबडी माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर मिसेस प्रीति सुनील जोशी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटीज एंड साइंसेस फ्रॉम वालचंद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर इन द प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव सीन अबाउट द बेसिक्स ऑफ अल्ट्रासोनिक्स एंड द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ अल्ट्रासोनिक वेव्स बाय द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन स्टूडेंट विल बी एबल टू लर्न अबाउट द जनरेशन एंड डिटेक्शन मेथड्स ऑफ अल्ट्रासोनिक वेव्स the contents of this session include the introduction generation of ultrasonic waves and detection methods of ultrasonic waves the word ultrasound is a combination of words ultra which means beyond and sonic means sound that is audible sound sound waves of frequencies ranging from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz are audible to human ear waves of frequencies beyond 20 kilohertz are called ultrasonic waves human ear cannot sense ultrasonic sounds but dogs and other animals have the ability to hear the high frequency sounds there are mainly two important methods for generating ultrasonic waves which are based on two different phenomena that is magnetostriction method and piezoelectric method let us see first the magnetostriction method this method is used to produce waves in the frequency range of 20 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz joule discovered the phenomena of magnetostriction in 1847 the working principle of this method includes when a rod of ferromagnetic material such as iron or nickel is kept in a magnetic field parallel to its length then the rod suffers a change in its length this change in the length is independent of the direction of the magnetic field and it depends only on the magnitude of the field and the nature of the material this phenomena is known as magnetostriction the experiment set, experimental setup for this method is as shown in the figure an alternating magnetic field is applied to the ferromagnetic rod such as nickel by bonding the coil of wire around it and the current is passed through the wire the magnetic field applied is parallel to the axis of the ferromagnetic rod if the alternating magnetic field oscillates at frequency f the rod changes in length once in each cycle this results in setting up vibrations in the rod whose frequency is twice the frequency of magnetic field the change may be either elongation or contraction depending upon the material normally the amplitude of the vibrations is small but when the frequency of the alternating fields is equal to the natural frequency of the rod resonance occurs and the amplitude of the vibrations will be considerably larger further if the frequency of the alternating field lies in the ultrasonic range an ultrasound of frequency 2f will be generated in the medium that is in contact with the ends of the rod as the rod vibrates longitudinally the frequency of oscillation is given by f is equal to n upon 2l into under root y by rho where l is the length of the rod y is the young's modulus rho is the density of the rod and n is any integer the advantages of this method are the oscillatory circuit is easy to construct it can produce the frequencies up to 3 megahertz and the experiment is inexpensive the disadvantages are it cannot produce frequency above 3 megahertz it cannot produce a stable frequency at the output as the frequency is inversely proportional to the length of the rod the frequency cannot be increased as the length of the rod cannot be reduced then the next method is piezoelectric method this method is used for the production of waves of frequencies greater than 1 megahertz the french physicist perry curie and paul jain curie discovered the piezoelectric effect in 
crystals that exhibit piezoelectric effect are called piezoelectric crystals the working principle includes if an electric field is applied across one pair of faces of piezoelectric crystal it gets deformed along the direction of the opposite pair of the faces if an alternating voltage is applied between two opposite faces of the crystal then it vibrates with the frequency of the field the mechanical deformation of the piezoelectric materials caused by an external electric field that is the crystal expands or contracts periodically thereby generating ultrasonic waves this effect is known as inverse piezoelectric effect this is the experimental setup for the method the oscillating electric field is converted to mechanical vibration of the crystal owing to the piezoelectric effect this vibration produces sound wave of the frequency equal to the frequency of vibration which is the frequency of electric oscillations in this way ultrasonic waves can be produced the natural frequency of the crystal is given by f is equal to n upon 2l under root y by rho when the frequency of the electrical oscillations is equal to that of natural frequency of the crystal then the resonance is achieved and the sound waves of maximum amplitude are produced advantages of piezoelectric method are the output of this oscillator is very high it is not affected by temperature and humidity and also ultrasonic waves of higher frequencies can be obtained with this method the disadvantages of this method are the cost of piezoelectric cords is very high and the cutting and shaping of quartz crystal is also very complex then let us come to the detection methods the different detection methods of ultrasonic waves are thermal detection piezoelectric detector sensitive flame method kunz tube method now let us see these methods in detail one by one the first detection method is thermal detection as the name indicates thermal means it is related with the temperature a fine platinum wire probe is used in this method for the detection of ultrasonic waves due to alternate compressions and rarefactions in the medium resulting from ultrasonic waves there occurs a change in the temperature at nodes the wire is alternately heated and cooled which changes the resistance at nodes this change in the resistance of platinum wire is detected by a sensitive bridge as shown in the figure the second method is piezoelectric detector in this method ultrasonic waves are applied to one pair of faces of quartz crystal as a result varying electric charges are produced on the other pair of faces of the crystal these charges being small are amplified and then detected third method is sensitive flame method a narrow sensitive flame is moved along the medium at the positions of anti nodes the flame is steady and at the positions of nodes the flame flickers because there is a change in the pressure in this way positions of nodes and anti nodes can be found out in the medium the average distance between the two adjacent nodes is equal to half the wavelength if the value of the frequency of ultrasonic wave is known the velocity of ultrasonic waves propagated through the medium can be calculated then the next method is kunz tube method a kunz tube can be used to detect the ultrasonic waves of relatively longer wavelengths stationary ultrasonic waves are produced in air contained in a long tube supported horizontally the lycopodium powder which is sprinkled along the inner surface of the tube collects into small heaps at the nodes and is blown off at the anti nodes as shown in the figure the appearance of heaps indicates the presence of waves 
and the mean distance between the two successive hips is equal to lambda by 2. Then the next method which is used to determine the wavelength and velocity is known as acoustic diffraction method. When ultrasonic waves travel in a liquid medium, the density of the liquid undergoes changes due to alternating compressions and rarefactions, which produces a periodic variation of refractive index of the liquid. Consequently, a liquid column which is subjected to ultrasonic waves act as a grating which is called as acoustic grating. If a monochromatic source is passed normally through the liquid column, the liquid causes diffraction of light and the diffraction pattern can be used to determine the wavelength and the velocity of the waves. This is the experimental arrangement for this method. A glass tube is filled up with a liquid. The piezoelectric transducer Q is positioned at the bottom of the glass tube and a reflector R is arranged at the top. The surfaces of the crystal Q and the reflector R are held perfectly parallel to each other. S is a slit through which monochromatic light passes and gets collimated and rendered parallel. The image of the slit is then focused on the screen P by the lens L. Now working, when the quartz crystal Q is not excited and it is at rest, then the light forms a single image of the slit on the screen P. When the electric circuit excites the crystal, it goes into a state of vibration and produces ultrasonic waves. They propagate through the liquid column and get reflected at the reflector located at the top. Then the two waves combine to form stationary waves in the liquid column. The density and hence the refractive index of the liquid is maximum at nodal points and minimum at antinodal points. Therefore, the nodal point act as opaque regions while antinodal areas act as transparent regions for light. The liquid column thus resembles a ruled grating and causes diffraction of light. The image formed on the screen consists of a diffraction pattern having a central maxima flanked by the first order, second order maxima and minima and so on. Grating equation a plus b sin theta is equal to m lambda is applicable to the acoustic grating also. The grating constant a plus b in this case equals lambda u by 2 and which is given by lambda u by 2 sin theta is equal to m lambda where lambda u is the wavelength of ultrasonic waves, lambda is the wavelength of monochromatic light used to produce the diffraction pattern and m is the order of the maxima and takes integer values 1, 2, 3, etc. Therefore, lambda u is equal to 2 m lambda upon sin theta. So, knowing the values of lambda, m and measuring the angle theta, we can calculate the wavelength lambda u. This method of determining the wavelength of ultrasonic waves is known as acoustic diffraction method. This method is also used for the determination of velocity. First, the wavelength is determined using the values of lambda, m and theta in the equation. Then the velocity of ultrasonic waves in the liquid Vu is computed from the relation Vu is equal to f into lambda u, therefore Vu is equal to 2m lambda u into f divided by sin theta, where f is the frequency of the ultrasonic waves which is known as the frequency of oscillator. So students you have gone through this video, now try to solve these numericals.
the answers for these numericals are these are the references for this session thank you